Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm going to be showing you how to create an infinite background in Adobe After Effects. An infinite background is a background that will repeat infinitely over time. It's going to repeat this motion as long as we want this motion to repeat. We can go uh, an hour, two hours, two days in, in time in the composition here, and it'll keep doing this animation over and over and over again. And so this is what we're going to be creating today. It's a really, really fun effect. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and create ourselves a new composition. Uh, I just have this composition created here called Final, but we can go ahead and actually create our own and work from there. So I'm just going to go to File or uh, Composition, New Composition, and we'll just name this one uh, Final 2. And then we're going to go ahead and make sure this is a 1920 by 1080p. So it's just a 1080 composition rate like so. What we want to do is we want to take our trees and drag them in or whatever asset we're doing here. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and drag it in and we're going to make some big trees this time. Let's put one there and then I can either hit control D or control CV just to duplicate them. And I'm just going to create a couple of them like so. And there we go. Right like that works perfectly fine. So now we're going to take these three. We're going to right click and we're going to hit pre-compose. So make sure you select all three of them right click and then go to pre-compose and then we're going to name this one tree layer right like this and you'll see that we have now this pre-composition called tree layer within here what we want to do is we want to jump inside so we're in final and we want to or final two and we want to jump inside the tree layer so we're going to double click to go inside the tree layer and now you'll see that we have our three clips again and then we're going to right click on this and we're going to pre-compose them one more time and this will make uh, sense in one second so what I can now do is just name this one tree frame, make sure that's different. And then so what we've created is we've created this frame. So now they're all grouped together and then this layer that we can put a bunch of different frames together on. So we're going to go up to composition, composition settings, and then into the width and the height parameters right here. With the width, we're going to go up to 5160. And the reason I chose this is this is three times the 1920. So what we have right here is a standard 1080p uh, aspect ratio. What I want to do is I want to change this to three times that to give us more frames. We can do four times, we can do five times. The more you do, the more sort of freedom you have whenever you're creating the, um, the effect. Uh, and that'll make a sense a little bit later as well. But for right now, what we're going to do is we're just going to create three of them, 5160. And you'll notice right here, now we have this really, really long composition. And with this, with this composition, we can take these frames and we can put them inside of this composition and sort of create this overarching frame uh, and layer, which we're then going to animate. Now, the importance of a loop, and that's what we're doing with this infinite background is we're creating a loop. The importance of a loop so that it doesn't look like a loop or so that it doesn't jump or chop is to make sure the beginning and the end frame look exactly the same. So if we divide this into three separate frames, the beginning, the end, and then the middle, we need to make sure that the beginning and the end are exactly the same. Therefore, whenever it duplicates, it looks like that this is just a continuation of this and we can actually make it go around in circles flawlessly. So what we want to do is we want to take this layer, we want to put it here, and we want to duplicate it and put another one at the end. To take this layer and put it over here is pretty simple. You can drag it over and uh, find whatever technique you like to sort of line it up to the very end over here. But since I'm not doing any more sort of effects on this, what I actually like to do is go down to the transform, the anchor point, put the anchor point at zero, and that's going to go ahead and align it with the left side. And then that'll also change the way that we position so that our position will be relative to the left side of this frame. And if I type in zero here as well, what we get is it lined up perfectly along the left frame. Then we can hit control D to create a new one of these. Uh, control CV, remember, also copy and paste, and duplicates the layer. And then for this, I'm going to take the anchor point. I'm going to make it 1920. And what that's going to do is it's going to align it to the right side here. And then now our position, we can go to 5160 and it'll put it on the right. The reason we're gonna do this is because the anchor point changes, it'll put it on the right side, and then now we're going to go ahead and change the position so that it's at the very right edge. So since this, this composition is 500 or 5160 long, we can take the zero to be the left side and 5160 to be the right side. So if we just align those two, we get this. Now for the final part in the center, what we need to do is make sure that we don't accidentally um, sort of overwrite any of this. We don't want these two to blend with one another. 
so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna actually drag in like a single tree asset right here. Drag it up to be pretty decently big. And just sort of have this like centerpiece going right here. And so now what we've had is this, this little background that we can, we can work with and we can animate. Remember, like I said, if we make this longer, we get sort of more room to work with here. Now we're gonna go into the back into final two and we'll see that you have the tree layer sitting right here. Now you'll notice that if we go to the very front right here and then go all the way to the back, they look exactly the same. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna keep looping this over and over and over again. So we're gonna go into the transform down here into the transform effect, go to the very beginning of this. We're gonna turn on the keyframe marker and we're gonna make sure it's lined up on the left edge over here. So what we can do is just drag it over so it works. You can also use the anchor point trick if you wanna make sure it's lined up perfectly, but this doesn't need to be as precise. So I'm just gonna move it over like so. Looks good right there. And then now I'm gonna move forward about one second. So we can move it over just about one second. Let's zoom this in, because this is actually really, really large. Move it over to about one second right there. And then we're just gonna take this and drag it all the way over. I'm holding the shift key here while I'm dragging to make sure that it goes perfectly straight. We don't want it to go up and then jump and then up and then jump every time it loops. So if we hold the shift, it'll make this a perfectly straight line and it'll make the animation perfectly straight as well. So what we're gonna do now is go and I just like to turn on the motion blur, sort of shows you the motion of the assets as they move. And so now we have this sort of simple animation. The next step is going to make this loop indefinitely, and this is actually really, really easy to do. If we hold the Alt key and click on the position marker right here, we can then type in a little expression. And this is just an expression you have to memorize. There's nothing like uh, special about this. It's just something you memorize and you learn or you write down as a little cheat sheet. And that is loop out. And then we're going to type in cycle here. Make sure that it is loop out and then the beginning of these parentheses and then in quotes cycle and then at the very end it will be uh, a semicolon. This is JavaScript, but JavaScript that talks specifically to Adobe After Effects. And with that, what it does is it takes all the keyframes and then it loops it out over time. So I could have a thousand different keyframes of motion in here and right when it gets to the end, it's gonna copy and paste those over time indefinitely. So what we get is we get this right here. And you'll notice you cannot see the seam. It does not look like there's any jump or cut at any point in this. And that's because if we go right here to the very, very beginning, right when we get to the end frame, it looks like the beginning frame. So watch, watch this edge and watch that edge. If when I go to the next one, it jumps over and it actually moves forward by one. And so it looks like it's just a continuation of motion. And that is what creates our loop. And again, like I was saying, you can make this as long as you want, as long as you make the first frame and the back frame exactly the same. You could have, you know, an entire landscape, something that would take, you know, 12 or 15 seconds to loop through and then loop it back across that again and you'll get that neat little effect. And we can add as many different layers as we want to this sort of final one. We can create a tree layer. We could create a mountain layer in the background, you know, something moving just slightly slower in the background. We could create a really fast front layer of bushes. All you have to do is just adjust the timing of them. So if we wanted to create a mountain layer and made it really, really long, we could do something like this, where they move really slowly in the background. But since the beginning and end are the same, it'll just look like it's looping again. And if we wanted to make it really, really quick, we could bring it in like this. And now it looks like you're just flying by at a really, really fast pace. But that is how you create an infinite background in Adobe After Effects. Really, really fun effect, and it has some really neat applications within animation. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and throw them in the comment section below or on our website at adobemasters.net. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, go ahead and that subscribe button and make a video every other day on Adobe related products. And until next time, guys, see ya.